Law number one, never outshine the master. Louis XIV saw himself not just as the king of France, but as France itself. Going against him was like going against the whole nation. Nicolas Fouquet, his finance minister, threw a big party hoping to impress the king, but his popularity made the king feel insecure and threatened. The king accused Fouquet of stealing, even though he was innocent. As a result, Fouquet spent his life in prison. This story shows that trying to outshine your bosses can have bad consequences. In contrast, in the 16th century, Galileo Galilei, a famous astronomer, used this law wisely. To continue his astronomy work, Galileo dedicated his discovery of Jupiter's moons to the Medici family, since the royal symbol of this family was the planet Jupiter. The Medici family, impressed by his gesture, became his supporters. They appointed him as their official mathematician and philosopher, providing him with a stable income and a comfortable life. How can you use this law to your advantage? Be careful about showing off too much. Boost your power by making your bosses look good. Show interest in seeking advice from those above you and publicly acknowledge your boss's contribution to your success. Law number four, always say less than necessary. Gaius Martius Coriolanus was a military hero in ancient Rome, greatly admired by the people. He aspired to join the Senate, but he just couldn't stop talking. He bragged about himself and claimed victory before the vote. Due to his arrogance and insulting speeches, people lost respect for him. The more he talked, the less people liked him. Eventually, he lost the election and was banished from the city. On the other hand, Louis XIV was a man of few words. He used phrases like, I shall see for all requests. His silence kept everyone unsure of his thoughts or reactions. People talked more to fill the silence, unknowingly revealing information he used against them. This silence made him powerful and feared. How can you make this law work for you? When you talk less, you get to listen more. This helps you understand things around you better. For instance, if you are more focused on listening than talking, you can better understand your customer's needs. Also, if you can explain something using fewer words, go for it. Keeping it short shows that you respect other people's time and focus. Law number five, so much depends on reputation, guard it with your life. In ancient China, Mitsu Sia was liked by the ruler for being kind. When Mitsu Saya's mom got sick, he secretly used the ruler's carriage to see her, breaking a rule. At first, the ruler praised him for caring about his mom. But some jealous people spread rumors to ruin Mitsu Sia's reputation. The ruler then saw his actions in a bad way and punished him by cutting off his feet. This story shows how important it is to protect your reputation no matter what. Also. Having a strong reputation can make you powerful without much effort. In China's War of the Three Kingdoms, General Liang tricked his rival, Sima Yi. Liang had fewer soldiers, but he relied on his strong reputation for winning battles to fool Yi. Liang dressed up as a Taoist and played music on the city wall he was protecting. This made Yi's soldiers think there were no guards. When Yi saw Liang alone on the wall, he thought it might be a trap, so he told his soldiers to retreat. How can you make this law work for you? To build a reputation, start by showing one great quality like honesty or skill. Let people know about it slowly, but be careful. Keep it safe from anything that might harm it, like negative talk. Your reputation will speak for you and impress others. Law number nine, win through your actions, never through argument. Roman consul Mucianus needed a big mass to break into a Greek town's gate. He asked for the largest mast from Athens, but the engineer there thought a smaller one would work better for the ram. He secretly sent the smaller mast, thinking Mucianus would be impressed. When Mucianus got the smaller mast, he called the engineer. The engineer explained why the smaller mast was better, but Mucianus was furious. He didn't care about the engineer's reasons and hit him to death. On the other hand, in Italy in 1502, a sculptor ruined a big piece of marble. The mayor wanted to save it, and Michelangelo said he could turn it into a statue of David. As Michelangelo was finishing, the mayor said the nose was too big. Michelangelo pretended to fix it with dust and a chisel. He didn't want to upset the mayor. Even though he didn't change the nose, the mayor liked the statue, thinking Michelangelo had made it better. 
How can you use this law at work? Words are powerful, especially when you're dealing with bosses. If you're treated unfairly, even when you're right, it's good to stop arguing. The boss might feel insecure or too proud to hear you. Instead of arguing, share different ideas and show what works. Choose wisely which battles are worth fighting. Sometimes, it's better to step back and let them see their mistake on their own. Just wait for them to ask for your help to fix it. Law number 11. Learn to keep people dependent on you. Francesco Busson, known as Count of Carmagnola, was a skilled military leader who protected Venice and was loved by the people. Sadly, he was fooled, captured, and killed by the city's ruler. Many great leaders faced similar fates. They won battles, but later got replaced or removed. It happened because their success made their bosses afraid, and younger, cheaper soldiers were available. On the other hand, Otto von Bismarck ensured he couldn't be replaced. When he joined the Prussian parliament, he became friends with the weak king, Frederick. It's easier to build a strong relationship with a weaker person than with a powerful one. Bismarck earned the king's trust by defending him from critics. In return, Frederick promoted him to minister. He did the same with the next king, William, who became dependent on him. As a result, William made him prime minister. Bismarck got what he wanted by threatening to quit. Eventually, he tricked the king into making him emperor. How can you make this law work for you? Like Bismarck, ensure you're the only one who can do what you do. Learn skills that are hard to replace, making you valuable and difficult to let go. Always have other options available and show that your skills are wanted elsewhere. Show yourself as an expert in a specific field, making others think they can't work without your special knowledge. Law number 16. Use absence to increase respect and honor. In ancient media, a man named Dioses wanted to rule Medea. However, due to the people's negative experiences with monarchy, they were against having a ruler. Dioses initially gained recognition as a fair judge, requested to settle disputes, leading to a peaceful society. Then he suddenly retired from public life, causing chaos. People desperately wanted him back and even set up a monarchy for him. As the king, he stayed distant and spoke with people only when he wanted to. He gained huge respect and ruled for 53 years. How can you apply this law in your life? Once you're known and respected, being absent sometimes boosts respect and honor. If you're always around, people might lose interest in you. But stepping back at the right time, just before people get tired of you, renews respect. Taking a time off or skipping some office events can also help. It's quite simple. When something's hard to get, it becomes more valuable. Law number 28. Enter action with boldness. In 1925, a con man named Count Victor Lustig tricked scrap metal dealers into believing they could buy the Eiffel Tower. One person became suspicious while writing a million-dollar check. Instead of backing down, Lustig asked for more money, pretending he was a government official asking for a bribe. The person fell for it, recalling similar requests from French bureaucrats and gave extra money along with the check. Later, he realized it was a scam and had lost a lot of money. However, he kept it secret to avoid public embarrassment and protect his business reputation. How can you apply this law in your life? Mastering this law is crucial because many of us tend to be timid. We try to avoid conflicts and try to please everyone. Sometimes, we think of doing something bold, but we rarely act upon it. We fear what might happen and how others might judge us. Being bold isn't a natural trait. It requires practice. Try being bold, like in a negotiation for a price. Avoid the common mistake of asking for too little. For example, when Columbus asked the Spanish court for funding, he also demanded the title Grand Admiral of the Ocean to gain respect. He got both. Columbus knew how to be bold and take action. That's all. If you like this video, please hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications. See you in the next video!